You mook! Hey! It's only you... been but a moment, and you've already ruined everything. Don't you fucking talk back to me. You don't, don't you talk initially to me. You, you want to talk to the Don, you gotta talk to the Gooch. Uh... I always fucking... Ah, oh, motherfucker. Okay, did, did everyone hear hey. that noise? Been, uh, and moment. now you're hearing me. Did, did it... Chris, did you hear that fucking obnoxious beeping sound? I, I did. So I'm gonna tell the story of that obnoxious beeping sound while I go address it. I have this fucking box in my house. And it's my internet box, my modem, and for some baffling reason, it has a battery in it. Because you gotta use your internet, even though your router is plugged into the wall, and your computer's plugged into the wall, for some reason, your your modem has to be backed up by a battery. Lord knows why. Wait, why do you have a battery-powered modem? I don't! It plugs into the wall, too! But it has this battery <laughs> in it, and when it decides that the battery is dead, which it never is, but you have to, like, make a ritual out of unplugging it and plugging it back in like any other internet thing. When yeah, it decides yeah. the battery isn't going to be connected, it fucking beeps at you every 15 minutes until you do that whole ritual. That sounds like a fucking nightmare. Yeah, and you can silence it temporarily, but it, it silences it for 24 hours and then it comes back and it keeps beeping. And you know what the shittiest part of it is? If and when the power does go out, yeah. you know what it uses the fucking battery to do? What? It fucking beeps! That's all the thing does is it beeps! It, Why? I, 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 Why? I, I don't know, man. I, <laughs> did you, I, you should try, like, fixing that. Maybe yeah, a, a better I, one? I, I need to, like, call my cable company. It's, it's like one of those things, right, where it's just annoying enough to, like, drive you out of your fucking mind, but not annoying enough to, like, call right. someone and make a day out of fixing it. Yeah. It's, it's like that horrible, just, like, even... Put up with it. That's, that's, like, the worst part about it, right? Because it beeps, like, every 15 minutes, so it's, like, it'll beep, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, I should probably press that. And then you wait, like, five minutes, and then you forget about it, and then it beeps again, and it's just like, Ugh! Like, technically, not as annoying as beeping every five minutes, but you'll at least remember it's there if it beeps every five minutes. Every 15 minutes, it, like, like it beeped earlier, and I was like, oh, I should probably shut that off before the stream, but I was doing something. And then, now <laughs> it's, now it's made its fucking debut on the stream as the, just, the great beeping sounds... machine. It is the stupidest fucking control. Like, it's not even the worst thing in the world. It's just so unfathomably stupid that it pisses me off to no end. Yeah, I, hate I, it. I always feel like it's the minor shit that makes you want to end your life. Exactly. Like, uh, it, it's like, oh, you know, like, like if you lose all your money or if you get cancer or something, you'd probably be like, I'm okay. Yeah, it's like, th this is hard, but you know what? I'm strong. I'll yeah. get used to it. But like, you're stuck traffic. in traffic for like four and a half hours. Yeah, the the LA traffic, the gridlock at the point where you could walk faster than your car. Then yeah. that's when you want to be like, okay, I'm just gonna leave this thing and drive and get out and lay down in front of it and just end myself. Like, like yeah, it really, exactly. it really is when you when you honestly consider it the most. Yeah. It's just the sheer incon like I think it, the, the sheer fact of it being a minor inconvenience, but being supremely annoying, is a deadly combination. Right, right. Quite literally, if we're talking about <laughs> straight up taking it to the the, the off skis. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's fucking awful. Um, yeah, have have you ever noticed to that token? Um, I, I know you don't drive now, but did you ever used to drive? Yeah, yeah, I drove all the time in uh, New York. Does it ever piss you off when you're driving somewhere that's like walking distance, but kind of far walking distance? Like, for example, right, to go to the grocery store near my house, it's probably about like a 10, 15 minute walk, but it's, you know, a three to five minute drive. But I have to make a U-turn. And for some reason, making that U-turn is the most frustrating thing to me. I don't know why, it's just like, because it's such a short distance, like the, the laws of traffic and like lack of maneuverability of your car, it just becomes hyper annoying to you. 
Do you have that? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm dry. Like I would drive absolutely everywhere if I could, because I hate walking. I don't know. I, it's just like I don't mind walking in the city, but where I was, it was like kind of like a suburban area, so there was nothing walking distance that I was happy enough to walk to. Right, right. So yeah, like, see, I'm I'm the opposite. If I if something is walking distance, I will like always walk to it. Oh, pretty much entirely because of that reason. Where it's like, I, I, I don't know why, but just, it just frustrates the hell out of me that I have to, like, obey laws of traffic for something that's, like, so close, you know? <laughs> yeah, I actually have that problem far more now that I use lifts and Ubers and shit. Right. Because it's like, uh, oh, it's really hot today. I could walk to, like, a fast food place. I could walk to the grocery store. But I'm gonna call an Uber because it's so hot, and I make a habit of every... Every time I go in, in into a, an Uber, I'll be like, yeah, man, I usually make this walk, but it's just so fucking hot. I've said that oh, so, so many you, times. You, in feel, the last you feel like you're being judged by I the Uber like I'm person. Being judged Have you ever, here, here's the test. Have you ever had an Uber person take you through a drive through No. Okay. Because that, I don't know if they'll do that, but that would be embarrassing. No, I would, I would end myself before I did that. Yeah. I mean, Even it's valid, of, I guess, if the drive through is driving distance, but... I, I don't know. It still feels like an extra layer of just complete... Like, what are you doing? Right. Yeah, like, I'll even... There have been times where I've, like, uh, I've gotten an Uber to places, and, like, I'll... It, it's just, like, a quick thing. Like, I want to get, like, a drink at this place. Uh, but it's hot, so I don't feel like walking. And then it's like, oh, I'm done already. If I call another Uber... I'll get the same guy. So what right, I do is right. I, I go to Lyft <laughs> to go back home. I, um, I don't know if this is a fair assessment, but, like, for someone like you or I, I feel like we're similar in this, in this case, where our social skills are completely despite our nature rather than being because of it. What do you, so, oh, like, what do you mean? Well, what I'm saying is a more confident person in their social skills might just be like, what, what's the big deal? Just take it, take the Uber through the drive through who fucking cares? <laughs> but someone like you or me, who doesn't really have social skills, but has trained themselves to be able to fake social skills, we're like, oh shit, that's not a normal thing to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, no, I see that. I can see that. It, it's I, weird, though. I, like, I genuinely feel, like, to my core that that's a weird thing to do. Right. No, I completely agree with you, but it's probably not. Like, it's probably understandable. But for, yeah. there's there's just... It is, it is kind of, like, a strange thing to do. Like, showing up to a party exactly on time. It's, it's weird. Yeah, I don't you do You can that. do it, and it's... You make the time out of your day to go to that party anyway. But you make yeah. it a point to not be urgent getting there. Like, have you ever, I guess, maybe I've lived in L.A. longer, so I've experienced this more. But I have a bunch of friends up in the Burbank area, which is like 45 minutes away from me. But it can yeah. be 20 minutes, depending on traffic. So there's been times where to get to something, I've been like, please let there be more traffic. I'm going to show up like 20 minutes early, and I'm going to look like a square. Even though that's probably completely understandable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I actually used to, I used to pride myself on being directly on time. Like I would always get to places exactly when something was starting, because I, 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 I don't know. I guess that's like some kind of like achievement unlocked right. thing that's going on in my head. Yeah. But uh, then everybody else is fucking late, including the people who planned the damn thing. So I just stopped. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You seem- you come across as too eager if you do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does really seem, like, pathetic. <laughs> it really does, but there's no- there's no real reason as to why, like... But yeah. you, you build- that- that's the thing is, just kinda... For, it's- it's that sort of paranoia, like, is everyone constantly judging me? And it's like, no, not really. Yeah, nobody cares. But... Yeah, we've we've figured out social skills. They're not ingrained into us. Yeah, I would say so. We didn't get the genetics. But I think we think that because I feel like of all people, we are the people who are like just looking at other people, being like, "The fuck is that?" Right, right. We, we're 
<laughs> completely hypocritically judgmental on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I've been to numerous parties where I've, I've looked at people and just like, you're, you're a fucking I've, idiot. I almost thought you were going to stop it there. Like, I've been to numerous parties. I have many friends. I know no. what socializing <laughs> is. I have, like, seven friends. I, uh, I have I have at least a dozen. Maybe a baker's dozen. Oh, man. But, yeah, like, I don't know. I've been in, at parties, and I've just been looking at people, like, <laughs> like vehemently judging them. Uh, not even, like, as an active thing, it's just, like, I'll see people and I'll think, what a piece of shit, and then I'll keep, I'll keep on moving. Right. Like, by the end of the night, I'll forget what made me think that. Yeah, yeah. Every, everybody has, like, that, that person that they met at a party, and you're just like, what the fuck? You know that, that it's a good it's a good environment to see somebody at their absolute worst because everyone's getting a little drunk, everyone's yeah. getting a little opinionated, and then, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. There's yeah, there's yeah. always there's always that experience where somebody somebody that you've never fucking met before just comes out of nowhere and just you've got a story about that person, how big of an asshole that person, who's probably probably by all means fine, but. but You've, yeah. You've got that that person from the story. You got you got the guy that did the Peter Griffin impression all night and you're just uh, sitting there with your arms crossed like why is everybody fucking laughing at this dude? You I know? think I think the thing is like because I think I'm a pretty good judge of character. So I just kind of assume that my immediate inkling is correct because it's it's usually right. Do do I don't do you have anybody that you've ever met like in high school or college who Everybody just also hated. Check, the, check this sick pod, bro. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I've definitely, definitely met the everybody hates this guy guy. There was this kid uh, whose name was Greg. Everybody called him Auschwitz because he was so thin. And this was everybody. I, I don't mean like my group of twisted friends who like think Auschwitz is a cool nickname for somebody they dislike. I mean, l literally, like teachers. Teachers would call him Auschwitz? T teachers that we were cool with, yeah. Would... <laughs> where, where do you think he is now? Do you think he's starved to death? Or do you I, think, do you think it's know. Auschwitz that ends Schwitz? Oh, that was a fucking good one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I think, actually, last time I checked, he, he did, he's on, like... He's, like, a part of this YouTube group that dresses as... The, it's, like, a cosplay group or something. He's clearly not the 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 valuable one in the cosplay group. I I don't know what, what like he I, I still don't understand. I saw a video of him like I had like nearly a million views of him dressed as like the Joker with a bunch of other people, and it was like. Did you just happen across this, or did you just fucking keep track of this guy because you're like this guy's such no? A I didn't keep track. Somebody sent it to me. Uh, somebody I went like, to high school with. We found Auschwitz. Yeah, we, that's exactly what the message said. It was like, dude, I found Auschwitz. And I, I forgot what that meant because it was so long ago. It's always, have you ever had someone from high school or whatever? Uh, I guess maybe this, this kind of counts, but um, have you ever had somebody who's like totally chill in high school and then you see them a little bit later and then it's like they're a furry or something? Uh, yeah, I had this kid uh, who went to my high school who like, I found out a couple years ago, like, killed and raped a dog oh yeah like that was a, a, a was real he, thing was he like a chill guy when you knew him i i didn't know him that well to be fair but i i remember him being like hey what's up man I'm like hey not much dude he was just like really chill and personable and then it's like oh fucked and raped the dog and oh, killed it yeah cool. that's that's really strange <laughs> yeah it's uh <laughs> probably a bit more of an extreme example yeah, I, I didn't really but keep up with uh, very many people from high school, but I I saw through, like, one of the very few people did continue to be friends with this person, and yeah, they were, like, the chillest motherfucker, and now they're, like, a weird furry. But, like, uh, the kind of furry that, like, their Facebook profile uh, reveals that they're a furry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's, oh, I do this thing for fun, and then it's, here's, here's, uh, here's me in a dog costume is my Facebook profile picture. 
Yeah, just no hint of uh, maybe I should. Yeah, I mean, a degree <laughs> of separation. Like, how do you, how do you fucking uh, employers vet you through your Facebook now? Which is, do how do you get a job? <laughs> if if yeah, they're like, yeah, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna vet you through your Facebook, and then it's like, yeah, here's me in a dog mask at a Super oh. Smash Brothers uh, tournament. <laughs> That's oh man, yeah, I uh, I've seen a lot of that. I think the, the the thing that bugs me most is, is seeing those fucking Snapchat filters in profile pictures. Oh, yeah. That's more of a basic bitch thing, though. Yeah, but... That's, that's like one always... of those... Uh, those fucking normies, you know? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Fucking it... pumpkin spice drinking ass. Oh my god. A, a lot of people just don't, like... Unironic memeing. Which is purely done by people that probably have better social lives than us, but will, like, scoff at it, right? Yeah. Where people are like, oh, yeah, here's here's a meme. I saw it, and I thought it was funny, and that's where it starts and ends. But we're like, look at this piece of shit posting a meme. <laughs> Just like it's nothing. Not even think... not even an ironic teach-caught-me-rolling-dank-memes <laughs> fucking bullshit post a meme. They just posted a meme. What an asshole. And then yeah. it's just a normal human being that saw a thing and thought it was funny. Although I will say, we're kind of we're kind of losing those memes that aren't funny on their own, which are like the worst ones. Like the I heard you like Mudkips. I guess Dat Boy was one where it's not it's it, not, it's it not funny in the slightest. As a joke, it makes no sense. But like the yeah. Arthur one, for example, like. You could never see one and still get the joke, right? If you saw one for the very first time. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like those, because they're pop culture related, I feel like... Like, that boy made no sense to me. Uh, but, I don't know, maybe I'm getting old. Right, but I mean, that's that's like one of those old school meme -y memes. Like, I heard you like mudkips. There's no joke behind that. It's just repetition of a phrase. Yeah. Have have you seen the uh, the nut shack thing that's been going around? No, I haven't. It's like a theme song to a terrible sh terrible show where like the word nut shack is repeated several times, and what they do is every time nut shack appears, they'll replace it with like a long clip of something. So like there's this there's this remix of it where it's just the theme, but every nut shack word is replaced with an entire reading of the B movie script. Oh, so it's like 14 hours long. I have seen that, but I was like, I'm not watching 14 no, of hours of this not. to get the joke. <laughs> it's it's and it's unbearable to listen to. Right. But I don't know. Memes are confusing fucking things. Uh. Like I've been around them all for like ages, and I still don't fucking understand. But speaking why. of memes, I I assume you've heard that Pepe is now like oh. <laughs> legally classified as a. Is a hate speech symbol? <laughs> yeah, it's great. Or something? Yeah. The Anti-Defamation like League. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's in some fucking database alongside the swastika and the confederate flag. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking depressing. <laughs> I, I, I feel like that's exactly what people that use it to fuck with Hillary Clinton wanted. Like, she's yeah, feeding yeah. into it 100%. But the thing that I love most about it is how accurately the meme represents that new development. Yeah. Like, you see a, a, a headline that says, Pepe the Frog is a hate symbol, and the first thing that comes into your mind is that sad face, and yeah. it works so perfectly. Yeah, it's, it's really... We live in a strange fucking time, man. Yeah. It's, it's bizarre. The, I, like, I'm... <laughs> just waiting for a fucking meteor to obliterate us and have it all be over with. I'm pr oh man, it's just... It, it feels like a joke. Like, I feel like at some point, this all became just a fuck. It just became a farce. Yeah. Oh really? shit, another fucking pod, bro! Damn it, I got a pretty good one. Nah, you didn't. You didn't got nothing compared to this, which is probably not that impressive. Check oh, it out. Boom, oh, two, oh, three oh. kills. Whoopty fucking doodle. I bet I, I bet you're fucking wicked hard. I bet all the honeys in the chat uh, getting mad froth about that that ill pod. God damn it! 
I had a pretty. I, I I did something in that game, and I was like, ah, oh, that's play of the game. Fuck Obviously. you. I could give this this Mercy uh, five commend, and it would make her feel good. But I'm voting for my shit. No, <laughs> flew away before I could vote for myself. It's okay. Somebody else voted for me, so it seemed like I voted for myself. <laughs> she probably at least the effect came across. Yeah, she probably at least thought that I voted. That that's the worst in this game when somebody else votes for you and makes it look like you voted for yourself. Then you're like, come on, dude. <laughs> oh my fucking god. I'm getting spammed with Pepe's, by the way. Oh uh, yeah? I just, I, like, my Twitter's a fucking... Let it wash breath. over you, Chris. <laughs> it's all all Pepe's all the time. Just because of this stream or just in general? Just in, just in general. Because of this new thing. Right, yeah. I'm just astounded that this was even on... Like, cause Hillary Clinton had... It on her site. Yeah, like well, her, her, her site website. has a her site has a bunch of fucking embarrassing shit on there. She's got uh, she literally has a shirt that she's selling that says "Make Herstory," oh. and she has a woman card that is like a credit card like card that you can actually keep in your wallet. No fucking way. I fucking challenge you to find <laughs> this. It's on her website. She sells it. I shit you not. I 100% shit you not. Oh, man. I, I, I honestly thought that was a joke. Like, I've been told that a lot. Like, oh, she's, uh, Hillary Clinton sells women cards. Uh, oh, that's a funny joke. That's a good meme. Uh, <laughs> it's, but I had no idea that it was a real fucking thing. It's weird because she, she has no sense of humor, but probably somebody in her campaign is like, now, Hillary, you got to come across like you have a sense of humor. Uh, yeah. Like the last debate, she said something like, ah, nuke fingers turn into Twitter fingers or something. I don't know. She probably said something like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure she's got like a staff of writers to make her seem like a human. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. That that debate was really fucking amusing. It, yeah, it was exactly it was exactly what I wanted it to be. Yeah. I was, I was a little disappointed that it, it seemed a little toned down. Oh, at the beginning. But, uh, at the beginning, yeah. At the, begin at the beginning, Trump was like, he had this this veneer of politeness for like the first five minutes. He was like, y you doing okay there, pumpkin? I want you to be comfortable. And then he just fucking, he <laughs> yeah. laid into it. Did you see him like just not shake hands with the moderator? Just like walk away? <laughs> yeah, I, he's, I don't know, he, he, I don't I don't know what your opinion on that debate is or if we even I mean you you make you make political videos for a living anyway so yeah, yeah. I'm sure you have no problem talking about it but yeah it's uh that debate was was interesting because I'm I'm sure that if they had like a fact checker on board it would have seemed like Trump lost it horribly but yeah. the amount of conversational dominance he had in that debate like, I w that was the biggest thing I was wondering about is, is he going to fucking get away with the same shit he got away with in the Republican debate? And he kind of did, which is, yeah, depending yeah. how you see it, either hilarious or terrifying. Or maybe I, a little bit of both. Funny. I think it's hilarious. Terrorarious. Because like, I, 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 I can't. Hilarifying. I can't take this, can't take this seriously. No. This no, whole I, thing. I, I can't either. <laughs> like, uh... Like, I, I don't even think I'm voting, honestly, because I just don't care. I, it feels like kind of one of those things where it's like, you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. I had uh, I had somebody from my local PBS or something, uh, or I think she might be, she might have been like city council or something, but I was, I was at a fucking burger place uh, with my boy Kyle, big ups to Kyle. All, all, the, all these, all these homies in the chat know my boy Kyle. But yeah, we were just like talking about the debate in a fucking burger place, and this lady just comes up to us and is like, "Don't not vote, whatever you do." I, I don't know. I, I, I it, yeah. People yeah. treat it like it's the worst thing in the world, and I think the reason why is they, if they assume that if you are forced to vote, you'll vote for Hillary Clinton is kind of what. I gleam yeah. from it. Yeah, I think I think most people think that. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, it it just seems kind of pointless. 
Because I, I honestly, I don't think it's going to be a catastrophe if either one wins. It's either going to be business as usual or it's going to be funny. <laughs> I feel like we, in particular, have a vested interest on keeping the Trump train running. As comedians, <laughs> it's like the silver lining for it is there's... There, it's not going to stop being fun. No, yeah, it's going to be endlessly amusing. Yeah. Just ceaseless. Exactly. We and can... I, I just, I, it makes, honestly, the thought of him not being in the White House makes me sad, not because I support him, but because of all of the great jokes. Exactly. Like just just the, the look on Hillary Clinton's face if he, if he wins <laughs> is the stuff of legend in my mind. Or just even something as simple as Obama shaking his hand. <laughs> just like, I, I have to see that. I don't oh want to live in a world where I don't get to see that happen. Yeah, I mean, it's... I feel like it's kind of the second string from voting for the meteor, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, if the meteor is Bernie Sanders, then Trump is Hillary Clinton, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, I, I would assume that, that uh, an apocalypse would endorse Trump if it was sentient. A sentient apocalypse <laughs> would endorse Just, Trump. Just, uh... Yeah, just an, uh, a working class apocalypse <laughs> with, uh, you know, a, a, an apocalypse son, an apocalypse daughter, a, an apocalypse housewife. <laughs> I can't even imagine what, a f what the physical features of an apocalypse would be. It would be like, it would be like an exploding sun co coming home and it's like, Honey, I'm home! And the asteroid comes out and she's like, I made you dinner, how was... How was work? And and then an earthquake, like a like an earth destroying earthquake, comes out and is like, "Daddy, daddy!" A physical representation of an earthquake. Right, right, like, like right. The, <laughs> the shakes. Yeah, exactly. Just the whole the whole scene becomes that, a vibration. That's a fucking thought experiment right there. <laughs> yeah, how, how to personify. Apocalypse. We could probably do one of those weird Japanese dating sims, but with apocalypses. <laughs> they did one with fucking pigeons, so... Yeah, but at least pigeons are, you know, Physical objects. things. I feel like we're outside the box thinkers enough to, to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, probably. At least enough to make ourselves amused by it. Exactly, and, and if nothing else, that is... 90% of what I do this for, to amuse myself and only myself. <laughs> like, let's, let's be real here. I, I know... I know that nobody else thinks it's as funny as I do when I no. keep bringing up that there's no gold behind our money. But there's no gold behind our money, Chris. <laughs> no, th well, there isn't. I, I don't see why that would be a... That's I, just a, I, know that's that, just a... I know that there isn't, but I know that... I find it a lot funnier that there isn't than so anybody. You just, so you just find a fact amusing. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like uh, the three-toed sloth is in danger. Yeah. And, uh, and that's like a. It's <laughs> not. It's not a... only endangered, but its gold is worthless, and that's what's <laughs> more important. Fucking dirty sloths, stealing all our gold. That is, that's another. That's gold. another personal comedic perk for me. If Trump wins, uh, the. Well, no, wait. Gold dropped because of the debate. I I don't I don't know why that was, did but it, for some yeah, there's for some reason gold gold dropped because of the debate, and I, I didn't actually read the story, which I probably should have. I would have enjoyed it profusely. I mean, does it even really like? Because I mean, people value like just numbers, not like we're in like the Mass Effect system now. I think with like just like our money is just numbers and credits and shit like that. Right, we're getting Like, if close. somebody were to give you, like, hey, I'll give you gold, you'll probably, like, you'll, you'll probably say, I, I don't want gold, because I can't fucking use it. Like, you oh, can't, I'd, like, I'd absolutely say I want gold. But, like, would, would it be convenient for you to have gold in any situation? Yeah, if I want to make jokes about there being no gold behind our money. <laughs> I gotta put my non-money where my mouth is, Chris. I, I mean, I didn't think about it that way. <laughs> but, I, I, but I like the idea of, uh, like, just trying to shove a block of gold into, like, a, a vending machine. <laughs> or, some, or, like, a gas pump. 
Like, this is fucking worthless. Yeah. I, um... <laughs> it's also I... heavy. Yeah. So... But that just- that strength. just means that there's strength in gold. Literal, physical strength in gold. It's just one of these archaic things, like- like the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. The Olympics is, I feel, extremely pointless. Like, oh, we have the guy that runs the fastest in the whole world. He runs 30 miles per hour. He runs- <laughs> He runs an eighth of the top speed of your fucking Honda Civic going downhill. Like, what? Yeah. What's the point of that? Who, who cares? I don't, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I was gonna we've, try and. We've made friend. running completely obsolete. It's pointless. Yeah, but, I don't know. I, but I, some people. We still. <laughs> why? I don't know, but we have to have the fastest dudes. It's important that we have the fastest dudes. Swimming! Why the fuck is that important? Why the fuck do we have- Oh, we have the fastest swimmer. If we ever need to send a- Send a parcel by sea on the back of a- We've had- We've had <laughs> boats for how long? <laughs> yeah. I, even, I mean- Even before the car, we've had, you know, steamboats. Actually, water travel, I think, advanced, weirdly enough, faster than- Yeah, we've had sailboats! So there's just like pretty much just no. Yeah. What reason. what advantage does it give our country to have the fastest swimmer? Fucking nothing. I I feel like it's but, just an advertising campaign of people not to target for like robberies, or things. Like you you see Usain Bolt win and you're and uh, and you're um, like oh I wouldn't want to rob him. Yeah I wouldn't want yeah I wouldn't want to cross that guy. How does that help me? <laughs> I mean, it does Do they go, oh, but... you're from the same country as Usain Bolt, I don't want to rob you. <laughs> you you're probably know, fast man. like he is, that these American- Nobody thinks that, nobody thinks- Oh, the, the, these Americans must all be really fast in the water, because Michael Phelps is fast in the water. They all think that. Don't, don't fucking put them in a pool, they'll get us, like aqua people. <laughs> I- like I the don't creature. Know. I, I feel the same way about most sports. <laughs> like I, I, the like, movie H2O, the Disney Channel original H2O, the second we touch- I don't know, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know what really upsets me about that is that when you said it, I remembered it, even though it might- it might not even be a real thing. I know! It's- I- I, <laughs> I think it fucking actually was a thing. I- is I think so too. One? See, you're now- you're now surpassing my- now- it, now, at very least, I've planted a stronger knowledge in your head that may or may not be true than exists in mine, and that's all I set out to do. <laughs> now I'm genuinely concerned. Yeah, see? It, it's one of those moments where it's like, it's one of those deja vu things. Yeah. Where that... you're really uncomfortable with the, the f you're just unsettled by the fact that your brain can make such a massive mistake. Right, right. I... <laughs> it, it might be completely... <laughs> Oh god. See, that's- that's why I- I have this lizard brain that takes inventory of horrible shit that I see, even if I know nothing about it, just so that I can plant self-doubt in other people. It's a- it's a legitimate strategy. Yeah, it's- it really is. Nothing unsettles a person like the- the possible self-implanted faux memory. Of the Disney Channel original movie, which may or may not have existed, H two O. I mean, that's what uh, the beauty of specifics. Exactly. It's like if you quote something general, it's it's not going to be nearly as interesting as like Mac and Me. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> is that that movie with the weird alien where the wheelchair goes over the cliff? <laughs> yeah. It's the E.T. It's the E.T. ripoff about the uh, McDonald's alien. Oh God! Was, it, a, remember, was it really a McDonald's like, endorsement? Yeah, it was a whole. It was a McDonald's advertisement. <laughs> and like the whole, I think the I think the movie ends with them dancing like. Yeah, there, there, there were like McDonald's. McDonald's. Uh, there were McDonald's animated feature films at one point, starring Ronald McDonald and that fucking purple retarded thing, and yeah. uh. And the, the, was the Hamburglar an antagonist, or was he like one of those, like, I'm gonna steal your burgers, oh, cut it out, okay, we're friends now, I don't even remember. I have no memory 
of uh like he was a, he was like a smiley goofy looking mad magazine motherfucker he couldn't have been that hostile not <laughs> like he wasn't not, he wasn't someone like, he wasn't someone the mcdonaldians would want lynched in the streets you know McDon but he was he was for all intents and purposes a fucking criminal i don't know why they let him get away with it like yeah, he was, he was an escaped convict. Come to think of it, because he had like the prison. He's probably a fucking Australian. Alfred. Yeah, probably. They probably tried to put him in an island to keep him keep him away from the goddamn McNuggets. Why I... is that guy allowed to walk the fucking streets? But the Trix Rabbit, who in some cases legally purchased the tricks or was consensually given them, is not allowed to have tricks. Yo, I was always so genuinely disturbed by how shitty the Trix Rabbit was treated. Yeah, exactly. Everybody felt bad for the Trix Rabbit. I don't think that that's something exclusive to you. No, I, I, it's just fucked up. It was. It's, it's and it and that was he back when it was a pretty. That was back. Oh my god. He is literally on the box. He is oh. on the box of the fucking product. He's <laughs> not allowed to have. That means the Trix Corp, the or Kellogg or whatever. Like, hired him in, in this fictional universe where he's real, they hired him in to take pictures of himself and endorse this brand, and then they're like, no, you're not allowed to have it. Do you wanna, <laughs> do you wanna hear uh, the story of how my, all of my faith in humanity just dwindled for like half a second? Because you said, you started that last sentence with, uh, he's literally, but it cut out when you said he's lit. <laughs> and I wanted to fucking die. You have a little more faith in me than that, home sauce. <laughs> if, I, I genuinely. If I ever use hip hop culture slang, it will be a. Uh, it'll be completely in do irony, fam. You know what the. <laughs> you know what the most depressing thing about the the tricks rabbit thing is is that like they used to do it, I because that cereal used to be pretty good. Before they made it into puffs. Are, are you sure that it did? Does it taste any different? I feel like it does, yeah. but I feel like that also could be weird, uh, weird 90s kid nostalgia. That no, it, it absolutely like, does. Oh, it's, not, like, it's now shaped like circles instead of actual fruit, and that, <laughs> uh, that means I don't think it's fruit anymore. No, I think- The human brain <laughs> is a stupid fucking thing, Chris. That might be a thing, but I mean, I think it's mostly to do with, like, be like when they were fruit-shaped, they were more compact, so you Right, got exactly, cereal. they were crunchier. Yeah, and now they're just like puffs of air, kinda. Yeah. No, that's- that's valid. Do you remember the fucking Burger King video games? Yes! I actually still have Sneak King. <laughs> Sneak King was, uh... Sneak King was the one that shit, I bro. <laughs> there's- there's- Just for the name. It is by far the best piece of fucking- well, maybe not the best piece of branded content, but it's no, definitely no, up there. I was right the first time. Yeah, I liked. Uh, see, I love kind of ironic brand stuff because that totally was like if you look at the back of the box, it it literally it says something to the effect of, you might ask yourself, why does the Burger King need to sneak up on people to give them a hamburger? The answer is fuck you. It wouldn't be the same, and you know it. It it says something to that effect, like. Why don't you stop asking questions? Because you know it wouldn't have the same effect. And yeah, it wouldn't. It's yeah. right. It's completely why right. Why doesn't Master Chief just talk to the aliens? Yeah. Because fuck the aliens, bro. Fuck them. Even yeah. some of them are, are reasonable. They had their own little civil war. Yeah. <laughs> they, like, it could It's a viable question, actually. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, you, d you don't want to see that. We all know you don't want to see that. Yeah, I swear man. to God, if I get another ill pod and all the honeys get frothier... I'm going to get genuinely fucking <laughs> irritated. Yeah, no, it's probably going to be this fucking bastion. Oh, yeah. what did I say? See, now that irritates me even more because... I am, if nothing else, I am, if nothing else, a prognosticator of future events. Chris, would you fuck Jill Stein? I have this weird thing where I would kind of... I would kind of sort of, if I was a single man, I would fuck Jill Stein. Yeah, no, I, I, I would, uh, I would hesitate, but I think I'd eventually come around. If it seems like there's still passion pulsating from her panooch, and yes, that was supposed <laughs> to be an alliteration, I would say go for it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my advice to all of you about, about gilfs. It's because, good advice. Yeah. Solid, uh, Snapple cap. <laughs> I should write for those goddamn things, shouldn't I? 
<laughs> there's there's a lot of people that tell me I should do uh I should do many various different uh, advertising things, and I'm as soon as a brand recognizes my genius, uh, yeah, yeah. Th they'll they'll go far. Like Most I I honestly believe that Arby's should just contact nihilist Arby's and be like, look, can we hire you just do our job. Let's conflate our two fan bases. Or maybe, maybe low key nihilist Arby's is actually an Arby's employee, or like that a would, like, a, like an a, Arby's an social media campaign. That would be pretty interesting. <laughs> I love that nihilist Arby's, dude. Have you seen uh, Have you seen some of the shit posts that the Sonic Twitter has been? The Sonic Twitter is one of my favorite things. It's so See, the, fucking. The Sonic amazing. The Sonic Twitter is proof that ironic marketing works. Yeah. The DiGiorno one is actually pretty sick too. Uh, really? Yeah, the DiGiorno Twitter is pretty funny. They're a little less ironic than the uh, Sonic Twitter, but yeah, they're uh, they're pretty good. <laughs> I I hate to to bring up uh to bring up this um this less than optimal time in the DiGiorno Twitter's uh life, and I know it must be hard for them to think about, but to their credit, it. I feel like everybody here knows not to be an oversensitive dickhead. They, there was a, there was a hashtag about abuse victims called "Why I Stayed," and it was oh. like why okay. they stayed with their their abuser for so long. And I guess the DiGiorno Twitter didn't really look into what it was, <laughs> so they posted something that was like "Why I Stayed." You had pizza. <laughs> and, and they spent literally there was a period in time where if you tweeted that you were offended at the DiGiorno Twitter you would get an official apology from the DiGiorno Twitter a limited time offer you would get an official pizza apology so oh it was it was an interesting time not the highest time in the DiGiorno Twitter's uh, lifespan but I feel like they made it right. I feel I, like I feel like a big part of honest pizza is admitting your mistakes. I don't think it was a mistake at all. <laughs> you, I think they should have kept going. Listen, fucking New Yorker, I know you want to speak ill of all other pizzas. But give <laughs> give DiGiorno a break. Hey, man, uh, DiGiorno is okay. See, this is, this is the thing that fucking pisses me off about you, Chris. No, this is bullshit. <laughs> I'm calling you out on it. You're like, right. uh, I'm Chris Raygun. All your pizza out here is awful. It's terrible. I would never eat it. It's the worst pizza. And then you forego all these legitimately decent pizza places that deserve a chance. And you're like, fuck it. I'm going to order Pizza Hut because I'm never getting good pizza out here. Hey, <laughs> listen. Okay, so here's the thing. All pizza is good. I don't think I've had a bad pizza. Even, like, the worst pizza I've had is still pretty, like, it's preferable to semen. Uh, so, That's you strong know, words. You love semen. I know. I can't get enough. But, I mean, so a bad pizza is more just disappointing. Right. And with Pizza Hut, I know it's going to be disappointing, so there's not that extra layer of having hopes dashed in front of me. That okay, yeah, that's that's very true. Like I've I've been trying to I've been trying to eat healthy, trying to fix up my diet, and um, I've I've been uh, well, my girlfriend especially, but then me too. Uh, she she got me reading into fucking milk, and there's a lot of disgusting shit about milk that it, I'm not gonna shove down your throats because if you like milk, like milk, it's not gonna hurt you. But um, no. I've been trying to not drink milk but any milk substitute that i've tried has just yeah it's been disappointing so i've taken to just eating water and cereal not in cereal mind you but like glass of water <laughs> and, and like dry cereal yeah dry cereal and that's less disappointing than drinking cashew milk in cereal you know i feel like that's that's at least a, a layer of not giving up you know yeah yeah like okay i'm not drinking milk but I'm not doing the weird vegan thing either. <laughs> or you have like, uh, yeah, like, it, it's like, like, like if you're gonna, milk. yeah, if you're gonna go on it, oh, that was cool, and I also killed myself. 
That's the way I want to go out in real life. Really cool, but also definitely, definitely in the ground. <laughs> I, I don't know. The, I never liked milk, honestly. I was, I was never big on... That's why you're so short. Yeah, exactly. And also the unsettlingly large amounts of caffeine I had as a child. Probably oh, didn't yeah. help. Yeah, Probably I didn't, didn't, I didn't start all. I didn't start drinking caffeine until I became a YouTuber. <laughs> I, I I've been drinking it forever. By like, the way, I've been, I've been I, the, all that the, the four a.m. caffeine induced vomit is a part of the creative process that so many people overlook, but I find is paramount. Yeah, I, 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 I've I've just had so much of it that I just I don't throw up anymore. Yeah, you don't even you don't even have it. Just uh, sort of you don't even do you have caffeine poops still or have you gotten to that stage where your stomach is completely adapted to it and you get my the stomach has adapted oh, to wow. the max. I'm a fucking well-oiled machine. As long as it's only caffeine, anything else will kill me. Right, right. <laughs> I, I feel like there is an aspect of that where if you eat unhealthy for long enough, your body rejects healthiness. Yeah. Like, it, I, it, look, I eat one salad and it's green poop central. It's... Most, dude, you know, the, the, most of it's gotta be coming back out. The whole healthy... The whole, like, eat healthy thing... I don't know how legitimate my strange addiction is, but... When I see a person eating mattress foam for allegedly three years and still being alive... Yeah, you're like, I can get away with a third cheeseburger this week. Yeah, like, I'm just gonna have a cookie. Yeah. And, and a pizza at once. Because at least it's not mattress foam. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. The, that's the weird thing about the human body, right? is you'll hear about cases where it's like, oh yeah, this guy got caught in an explosion and a lead pipe got put through his fucking head and he walked himself into the emergency room totally fine. And then you'll hear other weird stories like a person got bit on the toe by a mosquito and died instantly. And you're like, what the fuck? There, there's such a weird variation of that. I feel like that's why I don't get grossed out by really nasty, gory stuff. Like I watched... I watched this thing where this guy dove off of a fucking pier and he smashed his face onto a piece of concrete underneath the pier and his face was completely split in half. He kind of looked like the Pokemon Pinsir, but with like a brain in the middle. <laughs> he was completely just and I was like totally fine seeing that because at least he had to dive 13 feet off of a fucking pier head first into concrete to achieve that. But if I watch surgery and I see this dinky little fucking scalpel slicing yeah. through human flesh like it's nothing, that bothers me. That makes you know me feel like, uh, oh, I could I could step on a piece of glass and be sliced in half, you know? You know what freaks me out even more? It's like, you ever see that video of the guy like slashing that truck tire with like a machete and like the air pressure, like cutting his arm off? What? No. <laughs> I don't know if it cut it off, but it like cut it like fucking really deep. And it's ju just the air pressure that was in the truck tire. No, like a like a big rig truck tire, like a. Big... It was a fucking massive truck. Okay. It looked like uh, it looked like one of those giant like troop transports from Star Wars. The right. Fucking, so, uh, so it was a Jawa decent... thing. It was, it was a pretty big fucking. Yeah. So that truck. the air pressure just fucking sliced his arm off. It, it sliced his arm pretty deep. I don't know if it was off. The video is like super grainy, but you could see like just. <laughs> blood central and it's like jesus christ air did that my, uh, have you uh, not to not to make this into the have you seen this video stream cuz i i really <laughs> need, i'm really trying to watch that about myself but there's this video of a guy slicing open a fucking whale and oh doesn't it like explode yeah the pressure of it causes all of its guts to fucking explode out and it's yeah. so satisfying for me to watch. I don't know why, but just seeing that thing and then like all of its guts just spill out. Such a majestic creature being laid bare for us. Yeah. How, how nice of it to share. Exactly. That's what uh, I always... I guess I'll... Uh, I guess I'll go Pharaoh. I'm gonna... I'm gonna be casual tracism. Tracism. Hell Wait, yeah. let's see. Do we need... We need something, don't we? We need a healer. I haven't taken my lumps this stream, so I'm gonna be Mr. Mr. Zinyatzel. 
I am a robot that prays. Hello. It's, I have a belief me. in God, and I am a robot. <laughs> it's surprisingly e efficient for warfare. Yes. Uh, this uh, <laughs> robot. Gandhi bot 2000. Yeah. It, it, is all you need to be a machine of death? Like, he's using prayer beads to kill. Uh, I just just kind of think, are all of them? Do they, do they all have prayer beads? Did he specifically go, uh, yeah, I want the I want the prayer bead weapon, or are they just capable of flinging? <laughs> like, what what is this? When this game first came out, I played Zenyatta a lot, and I had a dream. Have you ever seen Short Circuit? Is that the one with the Johnny... Johnny Five. Johnny Five. Yeah. I had a dream that was short circuit, but, and it was the whole movie, but Zenyatta was the robot. Were you watching the movie or were you the I robot was watching in the movie? In, I was watching the movie in my dream. The worst kind of and, dreams is those dreams where you're not really 100% sure what your fucking perspective is. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. You ever had those where it's like you're watching a movie and then all of a sudden you're in the movie, but you're like a character in the movie and... Th that's those are weird. Dreams those are, are fucked. Those are bizarre to me. I, I have fucking bizarre Weird dreams, and then I also have really boring dreams like I have dreams yeah. where it's like I, I bought a new pair of shoes you, Oh, do you have these? These are my least favorite kind of dreams And I'm sure that it's like only specific to our fe field of work. Do you have dreams? Where you just spend like six hours editing something or working on the project that you're working on and then you wake up from the dream and it's almost like losing a save file. Yeah. I fucking hate those. They're the most frustrating dreams. No, you know what's even worse is like, uh, you have like a dream that seems, that's like a normal day that's just slightly better than like what a normal day would be. Like, uh. Yeah, like, like you go you to like bed to thinking, sleep. I got like so much work done. And yeah. then you wake up and you're like, ugh. No, not even like like you, like you go to bed and then your dream is you start your day, and like something fortunate happens like oh mysterious benefactor left how much money in your bank account for no fucking reason and yeah. you're like oh this is a dream I won't question it but everything else is the same so you go and you get like equipment and shit and you're like yeah I can't wait to start using this shit and then you wake up. And you're not entirely sure if it happened or not. I had a dream where I moved into an office, got it all set up, and fucking painted it. And then woke <laughs> up! And I was like, God damn it! I didn't even- in the dream, I didn't even get to use it. So it was like- yeah, I, I just like, did like the, okay, I'm gonna get this out of the way and then this is gonna set me up for the future. And then I woke up. That's uh, the worst. It is. I feel like that's that's a very job specific uh, grievance that you and I have, but yeah, it's. I've had the. Editing I feel like that's our equivalent to the. I went to school in my underwear, kind of, fucking kinda, thing. Kinda, yeah. I never, I never had that dream. I never uh, had the underwear as a factor. I, I had lots of, uh, lots of being naked dreams. What, what is that? Like I've had that once. I don't uh, know. I, I it's understand. probably it's probably a psychological thing. There there's certain things in in human psychology like uh if you have a dream that you're losing your teeth, that just means you're undergoing a bunch of life change, changes and shit like that. That's like a super common one. There, How there's How do they know that though? There's well like, there's there's just weird things that are consistent in human psychology. That's why when you when you hear stories about sleep paralysis, it's always like a big gangly black figure with a little white face. It's it's just <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, they're they're just weird things in human psychology that like they're not all the same, but there's just things that are kind of ingrained in us that. Okay. Wait, wait. <laughs> I can't let go of this gangly. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like like a like a long like a long appendaged figure, and usually it has a little white face. That's this is that's why <laughs> certain things are unset. I don't know why the little white face is a factor. Is, wait, so so is, is this a sleep paralysis thing? It's a sleep, it, it is a sleep paralysis thing, and it's also it's also like a nightmare thing. It sounds like a night like because I've had sleep paralysis. That shit's the worst. Yeah. You ever, you ever have you ever had that? Sleep paralysis. Yeah, like when you like so pretty much. I've uh, I've I've had um, I've had the other thing, where it's it's like sleep paralysis, but you're, 
Yeah, I, I, I guess you'd call it sleep paralysis. That's what it is. Like, it's like you you wake up, but your body hasn't woken up yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've had it. I had it once when I was a little kid. And yeah, I saw a big fucking gangly figure with like a white face. And that's, I didn't see that. Oh, I, I did. Yeah, it had like strobe light eyes. It was weird. It was really weird. That's upsetting. It is. It is pretty upsetting. And it was, uh, you know, as, as like a six-year-old, you're like, what the fuck? You like honestly believe that you you saw it. Maybe I did see it. Maybe it was just, but why would it be hanging out in my room just glaring at me? You know, you got to think at some point these sleep paralysis monsters would have better shit to do. Or at very least they'd kill you, right? Well, I mean, they are sleep paralysis monsters. Well, they just do it <laughs> for, the, for the fuck of it. Like, okay, either either they're creatures and they're on instinct, like they're they they're hunters that you know need to eat prey. In that case, they would kill you, right? Or they're sentient beings, which means that they have some kind of conscious agenda. In which case, why would they just be standing over your fucking bed doing nothing? It's stupid. They're silly. Oh, yeah, I, I said it. Come at me, sleep paralysis monster apologists. I think they're silly. You're gonna wake up tomorrow a fucking Stephen Hawking. <laughs> Gangly Stephen Hawking slinks <laughs> out of his wheelchair with his big, long, crippled arms. What would be more frightening? Just like, what would be more frightening to you? Waking up and there being a sleep paralysis monster. Still there, like it doesn't go the fuck away. Or Stephen Hawking rising out of his chair in front of you as you wake up would a monster like be real more Stephen Hawking or like the or real he's Stephen Hawking. he's also a dream paralysis no, monster no 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 so there's one one option is a mysterious monster that you don't know its motivations and the other is just Stephen Hawking that inexplicably can stand now what do you think would be more unsettling i just had the most unsettling mental image okay <laughs> Imagine, imagine Stephen Hawking with all of his, like, kind of fucked up, like, floppy out in every which way limbs, right? Yeah, yeah. Imagine you wake up, your body is completely paralyzed, but you're, like, sliced open from, like, your chest to, like, your, your dick area. Okay. And Stephen Hawking is, like, awkwardly, <laughs> like, ricketing and, like, just crawling inside of you, and he's like... This will be my new home. Like he's doing his whole, he's doing his whole like creepy talk, and he's like climbing inside of you, and he's like taking your body. He's just uh, taking like a quick little dive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> you know, I, you know, I, you know I, the the image that came into my head was like a first person view of that, and like you just looking up towards a, 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 a hospital room with a light, and then you look down, and then Stephen Hawking's like. It's it's his torso and his head, and he's just like swirling around, like like you would fl like like he's being flushed down a toilet. Yeah, he's like this go and he's like just fucking tearing shit out of you. Oh, oh god, god. It's disgusting. Oh right, there's a video game going on that I'm not contributing anything towards. I should probably pick a character and get on in there. With my yeah, they'll kick you, dude. They'll kick you. They kick you fast. My, yeah, they do. They're they're on the they're on the trigger with it. Although they shortened the um. They shortened the kick time, uh, okay. or sorry, they, they lengthened it because there was yeah. a thing you could do if you had a few Annas, you could all like crowd around a person and keep putting them to sleep and uh, they would get kicked. Oh, that's fucked up. Yeah, so you could you could cause them to like straight up lose a, ah, uh, shit, shit, I didn't mean to do that. What happened? I was trying to crash into a wall, but I kept steering myself clear of walls. So I just ended up, uh, being I, impressive by accident. Yeah, I ended up being impressive by accident, but also running from the point, which was kind of a bad choice, I think. A little bit. I'm gonna switch to Devo. You know what? No, Day Pig. Day Pig's the best. You gotta be. Oh my god. You gotta be the, the big old pig, Chris. You gotta be the hog daddy. I feel like Stephen Hawking is a consistent theme in every conversation I have. He always comes up somehow. Why you got you got Parkinson's on the mind or something? No, I don't know. Uh, Stephen Hawking just uh, baffles me. Or not? Is that no? That ALS is what J. Stephen Fox. Hawking has, right? You're thinking of Michael J. Fox. Yeah, yeah, no. Michael J. Yeah, ALS is the one where you stop moving. Parkinson's is the one where you you can't stop moving. You can't stop moving. Can't stop the rhythm. Yeah. The uh, I I love all those uh, I love all those images of uh, it's like really poor taste. 
But I love all those images of, of uh, Michael J. Fox with family and everybody's in focus, but he's like not. He's <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I want to see like the scene. Have you seen Whiplash? Yeah, yeah. You know that that scene, it's a great uh, the, movie. the big the big like drum solo scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I need to finish that. Yeah, sentence. You know, pretty much uh, it tells itself. Yeah. <laughs> oh I god. Oh fuck! I thought it was Soldier Seventy Six. I don't know how I did that. You thought you were some somebody you weren't. Yeah, like I saw the the queue and I was like, oh shit, I'm gonna queue up all, all up in this bitch. Uh, don't don't you just have that dissociative identity identity thing just every single day when you wake up and forget that you're not iDubs? <laughs> I mean, uh, sometimes, not all the time. That shit's uh, it's genuinely like I still remember the day I found out about that. That was genuinely a strange thing to realize. Yeah, you guys kind of look similar too. Yeah, and, and that's something you have absolutely no control over. Yeah, we we look similar. We have thin receding hairlines. We have glasses. Uh, it, it was the strange. Like I, I got you a have message. you have little like cadence things too that kind of yeah. Kinda... And it was one of those moments where it's like, do I, like, what's, how unique is a person? Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like, like there's got to be at least, especially now, I'm convinced there's several more. But like, there's got to be like a room full of people who think very, very similar to you or act very, very, very similar to you. They say that in, like, on the planet Earth, there are 20 people that look exactly like you. That's upsetting. I don't like that. Yeah, no, I don't like to think about that either. But, uh, if they had the same tattoos as me too, that would be oh, that would be extra weird. That, that'd be too much. Yeah, that would be like um, I would give myself immediate license uh, to just sever my own neck at that point. I think I think. But at then that point, they what matters. if what if they severed their neck and then both of your headless bodies like chickens were running around and you picked up each other's heads and then you put you put the wrong head back on, Chris? What would happen? Think about it. Was it? It probably wasn't you. That brings up a pretty good point, though, because I don't know who I was having this conversation with or not. But like the the head, the whole head transplant thing probably wasn't you. No. But so like, if you got like a, if you got like a head transplant or a body transplant, I don't really know which way it goes. But like, let's say your head was put on a different body. When you jerk off, is. Is that gay? It kind of have not, to be, wouldn't it? Because it's, it's not, it's not yours. I'm sure that there's like a Tumblr that's like that's that's trans body uh, shaming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it probably, probably. But... I'd, I'd probably say it's. Hmm, that's really interesting. Okay, here's here's a question. If yeah. you okay, okay, let's say. Let's just run with this head transplant thing. I'm assuming the head is the part of you that's alive, right? Not the body. That's yeah. what your brain is. It would have to be. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, your let's body say, let's new. say, your head gets sliced off, and conveniently, uh, a, a, a lady that you find very attractive gets her head sliced off. Okay. And she dies, but now there's this spare body for your head. Now, you get put on this body that you find extremely attractive. Would huh. you be, now, would you, like, consider that, you, like, if you took a picture just from neck down of the body, like a sexy picture of your body, would you find it sexually enticing? Or could you? I think you? so. I think so, because it's, it's, it's still your head. It's still your brain. Right, so right. So you could psychology. You could just do that. Ah, ill pod, bro. God fucking damn it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think so. Yeah, it, it, we're 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 answering the real questions. We, see, I feel like at one point or another, 
Especially you, because you, you sometimes talk about Islam. I feel like we're going to lose our heads at some point. <laughs> but... <laughs> um, so it's it's gonna be it's gonna be prepared for these things. Yeah, yeah. If uh, hopefully they have a really high tech lab in those. Yeah, yeah. Freedom, freedom of speech in the Middle East is gonna is gonna skyrocket now that these head transplants are becoming more of a thing. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe they they train special special carrier pigeons to. You know how they do that? You know how ISIS does that thing where they wrap the heads around explosives and the heads pop off? No. They do that? <laughs> I've seen, I did see a video on like Live Leak where they like wrapped in half. There's like wires around the necks and then the explosives go off. It's kind of like the Suicide Squad thing. What if, okay, yeah, what if somebody got their head blown off? We should start training, and the metaphor would be there too start training American eagles to swoop down and catch the heads out of midair. No, oh, that's exactly. And then, and then take them, take them to our troops, put them back on a body, and then use them for information. I'm. That's exactly what I was going for. That's ex what was I'm, it exactly what you were going I'm for? Not even fucking kidding. I was gonna go with like carrier pigeons doing it, but you you went the eagle route, which does make a little bit more sense. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's freedom. But, <laughs> But yeah, th that was exactly where I was going. They would swoop down and catch the heads and bring them back to like uh, Area 52 or wherever. The, whatever. Yeah, that's, that's where we keep all the, all the, the, uh, the heads. Yeah, the heads of the oppressed Muslim people in the Middle East. <laughs> and then we have them tell us their secrets. A fucking watch list. What if there was just a, a jar of <laughs> whispering heads? <laughs> But they, telling they, but, valuable ISIS secrets. <laughs> Are they whispering valuable? Like, that's always like an ominous thing in like horror movies to hear like whispering. Yeah. But like, I don't know. How do you know? <laughs> what like, if that was like a new challenge? Like everybody thought it was too weird to accurately record the information. So we had to, we had to get specialists in there that were specifically trained to withstand the whispering heads. <laughs> like there's a there's a room they made this room I don't know why they made this room it's stupid it's silly I don't like it they made a room that is completely silent and what when you go into this room oh yeah no I've you seen can, it. you can hear your blood moving throughout your body and shit like that like you can hear your innards and apparently the longest anybody has lasted in this room is like 20 minutes I actually I wanted to do that you did. I, I, yeah, because I, th I think it'd be super interesting because, like, I've been in really quiet environments where you could, where, I don't know, maybe it's just maybe it's just me and my fucking caffeinated bones, but, like, if I'm in a really silent area and I turn my head, I can hear, like, creaks and, like, I could hear, like, the, just the, the, the interaction of, like, the friction of the muscles and all that. Yeah. And it's always been super interesting to me that it could be quiet enough to ever hear that stuff. Well, I'm glad that you found the silver lining in your rapidly developing osteoarthritis, <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> no, like, I mean, because you can hear your, your blood if it's quiet enough. So it's like, I've just, I, I don't know, I've just been curious. It seems like an interesting thing to do. I wouldn't want to be there in the dark, though. Like, fuck that. Like, yeah. they do it in the dark, like a sensory deprivation thing. You know, oh, kinda. do they? Yeah, there, there's, uh, people are weird. The, the human brain just... It, it, that's probably, it probably stems from, like, the same reason why we get bored. I can't imagine that any other animal gets Watch, bored. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I feel like our brain has to constantly be doing something. Like, why the fuck do we dream? Right? Not, not from, like, a nihilistic sense, like, why even bother? But, like, why physically does our brain have to dream to keep itself functioning properly? Like, there's probably, that's probably why it starts to create weird, uh, hallucinations and shit like that with sensory deprivation, is because we yeah. just have that weird thing. But you could probably put, like, a hamster in there and it'd be fine. <laughs> I mean... Not, not that you would, but... I mean, uh, here's the thing, though. It's, a, a, a hamster lives a torturous existence. Yeah, but it doesn't like, know it's a torturous existence. That's the no, thing. No, so it's, it's by default constantly scared with no way of... With no way of vocalizing that or, or anything. 
Yeah, I guess that would kind of be a useless experiment if you didn't yeah. know what the hamster was thinking. But like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I did have a conversation about like, uh, like the other day about how weak people seem to be compared to like other like you see a gorilla, or like even just a fucking house cat jump off a fucking like thirteen story building and land and it's fine. Yeah. And oh, you meant physically me fragile. I thought you meant like. Oh yeah, cats jump rooftop to rooftop and they don't even care. But people are like, <laughs> "Uh, I could die doing this." Uh. Well, yeah, they don't they they also don't care, but I mean like physically, like it's upsetting to like I I've always had this conversation I've had this conversation a couple times where it's like I feel like I could handle a wolf far better than I could handle a wolf-sized cat. <laughs> so be a very So you, what you're getting thing. at is that cats are freaky. I'm what I'm getting at is cats are too superior. Uh, t t to be allowed. Like, they're just, they're too... I don't know. Yeah, it I mean, me. a wolf-sized cat, that's essentially like a puma or a... Yeah, yeah. Or a, like, a, I guess a leopard. Yeah, like a wolf, I know what a wolf's gonna do. He's gonna come at me like a dog. He's gonna just run at me. Or right. maybe do some other dog shit. I don't know what a puma's gonna do. Maybe he'll do some parkour. Yeah. You know, maybe he'll climb a tree and wait till I go to sleep. Like I don't know, I'm fucking no. They're terrifying. Yeah, cats are cats are horrible. I don't. I know saw. Why. A I saw. I don't know why people once. trust them. I don't. No, here's the thing. The, the, the frightening thing about it, like I like them, because they're that disturbing. Like I like the idea that like, I could have an animal like that. Protect my. Actually, he probably wouldn't protect me because he doesn't care. Right. No. See that they're they're calloused and and uncaring. They are calloused. I identify with that, to a degree. That's true. But but I don't I don't want yeah. I don't want like me in my house with me, you know. <laughs> like I I want I want something with an actual sense of loyalty. Yeah, that's a good yeah that's a good point. Like I would probably leave myself to die. Yeah, exactly. In, in numer numerous situations. I would clone myself just to just to kill it. Just to, just to, <laughs> Jesus just Christ. to see what it was like. So, yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't want that around me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, the whole cloning thing freaks me out. Like, do, do you ever subscribe to the idea that, like, uh, teleportation, like, when you teleport, you're just... Yes, you'd kill yourself. yourself. I Thank absolutely you. think that. No, I try to explain this so many times, and no one understands. Yeah, because it destroys you, and then it makes you somewhere else that's not the same you. Yeah, exactly. So, you, like, when you'd go, when you'd come out the other end, you'd have all your memories, but the one who went in is gone. Yeah. Like, he won't continue. So, like, I had a, a friend who was like, oh, what's the big deal? It's still you. But it's like, no, you, you've you died. Like, you, you, you end. Right, yeah, from your own perspective, it, it's over. Yeah. Yeah, no, the, the, just, I, w I wouldn't trust it. I w uh, it would take a lot for me to do that. Yeah. It, it, I'll I'll take the plane and it'll take a day or whatever. But yeah, I'm not I'm not stepping into the fucking thing that deletes me on a molecular level. No, thank you. <laughs> I guess uh, I think I I think I would do it if I was like 98 and I had nothing going for me. Uh, well, that's pretty much yeah. Me. But Just I, as like I a, would, let me test this out. I would also fire my body out of a cannon. Uh, and into the side of a building if I was if I was like 98, and that's also a thing that I'd be willing to do. Not that do you think you're gonna do you think you're gonna make it to, to 98? Oh God, no. No. <laughs> Not unless like they take my head and put it on another body, which apparently they can do. Yeah, I hope I really don't want to be around that long. Yeah, it, I feel like I feel like we're we got nowhere to go to, but but down from here. <laughs> yeah, I was on a, uh, a conversation with my roommate the other day about chimps, and like, like a chimp probably doesn't know where it's going all the time when it's like swinging through the trees and shit. So like at some point, there had to have been a point where a chimp was fleeing, and like swinging through the trees, and then that was the last tree, on the edge of a cliff. And he just fell off and died. Do you think they know that they're about to die? 
when they do something like that? Do you think they think, I, I'll, I don't, I, I don't up. know if, if they have, like, a, I know they have survival instincts, but I don't think they have a concept of death. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, but, but do you think, like, oh, I fucked up. Crosses, crosses their mind in whatever inf inferior language that they uh, speak. Maybe? I don't, see, I've never seen an animal fuck up is the thing. Well, I, I guess I have, but I've never seen, like, I've never, never seen, seen that. Deer oh, did I'm... I tell you the deer fucking, <laughs> the deer story? No. <laughs> so, okay. So I was, uh, I think it was Black Friday. We, we were going, I was meeting with a friend of mine to go, like, just check out Black Friday at the mall, see if we can get some sweet deals. So keep in mind the, the smell of savings is in the air. Smell of savings is in the air. We get to the, we get in the car, we drive off, we park, we park outside of a, a Best Buy, and we're like the last, some of the last people to leave. We go outside, we get in the car, a deer walks up to the car in the parking lot, looks at us, walks over to us, and sl proceeds to slam its neck into the car mirror breaking its neck and then hobbling off into the bushes. <gasps> what? Okay, yeah. when you say slam, you mean it like headbutted the car? Have you ever seen a giraffe attack another giraffe? No, but I want they, to. They swing their necks at each other. That's what they do. They swing their fucking heads. So it just smashed its neck into the... It smashed its neck into the car mirror, shattered the mirror, hobbled off into the bushes and presumably died. Yeah, there, there's really... Prey animals are fucking weird, dude. It, they're, they're like, designed to die. It's very strange. I, I will never forget the look on that inferior, inferior deer. As, yeah. it, just, as it just decided to, <laughs> to just end itself immediately. Uh, do you think it went and died, or do you think it lived a crooked-necked life? There's no fucking way it could... What the fuck is... There's no way it could have survived. Like, the, the way it was dangling there, <laughs> that was not a healthy dangle. Uh, so it's, yeah, it was... It absolutely it did. Was like if it didn't a... die there, it just ran into some other car. That's what I don't like about deer, is that, like, they're, they're literally jihadists. Like, they will just jump, they will jump out in front of a car for the sake of, I'm gonna ruin this car and hopefully die. Yeah. If I die, I'll try again. Right. They're the worst. Yeah, no, that, that's what I'm saying is they, they have, like, the survival instinct where it's like, oh, lights are on me. That means freeze up. Fucking what? Yeah. Or, like, <laughs> apparently if you turn a rabbit on its back, it can go into shock and die. <laughs> or something. <laughs> I guess that's to, like, save it the pain. As Maybe. It's, as, it's, as it's being turned over by whatever predator gets it. Maybe, but how the fuck does that, um, how does that pass through selective breeding you know like how does that how does that evolve if it's something that only comes into play in death fucking zoos <laughs> what? I, blame, I blame the zoos saving all these dumb animals <laughs> no i honestly don't know it, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense maybe th there just hasn't been enough time to correct it it's like those goats that faint like that can't serve a purpose the goats faint yeah, you, what do you mean? You tell me you don't you, you don't know about the fainting goats? No, I don't know about the fainting goats. If you if you there's a certain species of goat where if you frighten it, it just faints. Yeah, that is that's a weird defense mechanism of a lot of animals though, like possums. Will yeah, yeah, play but I mean dead. like goats specifically, like like it's easy. It's particularly easy for goats to frighten them. Yeah, to yeah, like you can. Hold up a baseball card of, like, Babe Ruth, and I'm sure it'll fucking be deeply unsettled enough that it would willingly lose consciousness. They're yeah. very easily shocked. Yeah, exactly, because, like... Surprised they don't have tumblers. Yeah, exactly. Well, because you think about it, Dave, Babe Ruth was, like, known as the best baseball player of all time in a time before black people could play baseball. So it's, like, that is shocking that that managed to happen. That there was even there were even greats back then, you know. He's like a pudgy old fuck. If I was a goat, I'd be pretty. I'd be pretty shocked to hear that. Yeah. But that's uh, that's just that's just me. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. Babe Ruth is surprisingly surprisingly overweight. Yeah, exactly. You you really think? 
that fucking Barry Bonds if he was if he was in the game back then. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, not presumably either unborn or a child. I don't know how old Barry Bonds is. I don't know. I haven't heard that name in fucking decade, mind you. Yeah. Barry Bonds. It, it sounds like Bearer Bonds. Like, he sounds, he sounds like, a, like a stock market superhero. Yeah. Buy some War Bonds! Yeah. Is, it, it's, is that it? I think so. I, I think you're getting your history right on that. Cool. It's a good thing. It is It is a great I, thing. I am mildly, historically accurate, despite the <laughs> despite my dropout. Degre I got a degree for dropping out. That's my I mean, favorite. that's that's more, uh, that's more useful than a degree in gender studies. Yeah, or liberal arts, or pretty much anything like that. If it's not like engineering or like math, yeah. I, I I feel like it's largely largely kind of useless. Yeah. Or I guess a like business doctor. degree or something. I don't know. I mean a bit like a, yeah, I, I think that's like the moat. I think that's the least useful one that's still useful. Yeah. That that's like the I'm going to college to do a job job degree. I'm going to get a degree in jobbing. Yeah, yeah exactly. But like, if you're gonna be a doctor, like, you should probably, you should be, yeah, go, go get a degree. Probably, it's probably a good thing. YouTubers give life advice. <laughs> <laughs> don't go to college. That's that's my favorite one. Is uh, hearing "Don't go to college" over Minecraft Let's Play footage. Like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> follow your dreams. But I to... <laughs> I had a dream of playing video games for my job, and I followed my dream, and now video games is my job, and you can too. Yeah. Like this, just this this phone. I'm like, 19, I'm and this you. has been life advice. Like. <laughs> yeah. I, I do think I've... if you're going for film and shit, like maybe, maybe think a little bit about that. Yeah. It, well, it depends on what kind of learner you are, really. If, yeah. if you can, there's people that learn very well in a classroom environment and people that don't learn in a class, you know, learn by doing. Um, that, yeah, so yeah. It, it really, even, even something like a film degree that may be air quotes, you know, useless as a degree might teach you skills that you need. If you are yeah, the kind yeah. of learner that can, you know, flourish in that environment. Yeah, I'm I not was... personally. Yeah. So. I, I, I mean, I, I took film. I took film classes, like a ton of film classes, but I like I knew pretty much. I didn't learn a damn thing because I knew all of it because I'd been doing it. For you years. mean that by by being forced to watch Un Chien Andalou, you didn't you didn't learn a lot about the art of filmmaking? I learned so much because I remixed Battleship Potemkin into a game of Capture the Flag. <laughs> I hate you so goddamn much. It's that was unreal. actually was literally a thing I did. Yeah, I know. That's assignments. that's why it bothers me because there was too much truth in it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I just kind of—if you don't know shit, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you, you could you could learn something. You but could I, maybe I don't know. sort of. I feel of, like uh, I feel like film school is mostly like m making connections, the class. Yeah, I you know. I, I think trade schools are going to end up being a lot bigger of a thing, especially after this generation who comes out of fucking college like, WHY DID I DO THAT?! Uh, yeah. I, I feel like we're going to see a lot more, here's a year program that trains you to do this specific job. Go nuts, champ. Yeah, I, I, could, I could see that happening. Which is, you know, it's more efficient for society too, honestly. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm totally in favor of that. Like the... What bugged me most about like going to like film school and shit, it's like, oh hey, uh, also, hey, you're gonna learn all this shit that you need to learn, but also here's English 209, and also yeah. here's chemistry. Like what the fuck? Yeah, I literally it, well, don't need this at all. I didn't take the level math I tested into just because like, why do I need math for this? Just give me the easiest math, and then I got the easiest math. And then my my college math teacher, who was like, he was like a college math teacher that acted like a fucking elementary school math teacher, or maybe like a middle school math teacher. But it was shit that I had done like three years ago in high school. It was like college level algebra. So it was like, yeah. it was like, 
if you're advanced in math like I am, probably not anymore, but was, it's like shit that you learned in 10th grade. So I was like, he was like, he would always get on my case for not taking notes. It's like, you're a fucking college professor. This is where you stop caring about whether we succeed or fail and just do your goddamn job, please. <laughs> like that's, that's yeah, what yeah. pisses me off is, I feel like there's almost the kind of people that become teachers and not all of them, some of them genuinely want to educate, but I also feel like there's a, a weird overlap with the kind of people that become teachers and the kind of people that become cops. You know what I mean? Huh. Like the people that like they want authority, so they become a teacher. And then you get these weird fucking like, this is my class and you're gonna care about it. Like fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm I'm only in here to get the credits and then leave. I or mean, even I never it, it, way, if yeah. you go further back, like high school or middle school, it's like I'm only here because literally I have to be. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. High school. What is this fun? Oh boy. Uh, I I wish high school could last forever. I go to every single high school reunion because I always want to catch up with with the teenagers I used to know because I became a boring fucking adult and those are my glory years. <laughs> let's, let's Once drinking wasn't cool, soup. I realized how hollow it actually was and now I don't know what to do with myself. That's depressing. <laughs> That's so fucking sad. Going to a high school reunion is is sad. It's just, yeah, it's like just, my roommates. It's I've, textbook I've known, de definition sad. <laughs> I've known my roommates since high school. Like we've, we've had like a pretty tightly knit group, and they want to go. And I'm like, I why? There's there's two types of people that go to high school reunions. That's people whose lives turned out horrible, and people whose lives turned out great that were bullied in high school. I feel like those are the only kinds of people that really Yeah, that's just to like for. just to go back and like rub it in. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I have 79 stocks. Yeah, in, yeah. There, there's thing, people right? that are like, oh, remember, remember when I was something? Remember? And then there's other people that were like, remember how you bullied me? Well, look at my Bentley. And it's like bo <laughs> both are, I don't know which is more sad, honestly. Yeah, I don't know. Because there's, there's a way to be successful like a fucking loser. There absolutely is. There's, There's a no... dog fucking me under this cloak, but you don't know. <laughs> I I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not a cloak, by the way. Fuck off. I wonder if Any anybody, fans. if there's any like gay people, in in the Middle East, who because something that I've heard about um, about like uh, Saudi Arabia and Dubai and things like that is be because it's like the, there's a, a kind of sex before marriage. Thing in the Quran um, mm -hmm. I've heard that a lot of them the loophole is anal so they'll do anal so that means especially if if you're like ninja costume Muslim like a gay dude could dress up in the ninja costume and yeah. and trick trick a Muslim into butt fucking him they would be none the wiser as long as he had a high enough voice you know, I got to admit, I've never once thought of that. <laughs> that is something that I've never thought of. I mean, it's it's very it's very risky. It'd be kind of like an Argo type move, right? Like it'd be it'd be <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it would it I would mean, be it would be like high espionage, but I really I really don't like the images that I'm getting. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. The, um, <laughs> just imagining Ben Affleck. What, that, what, that'll be his. Uh, that'll be his one? next Oscar-winning movie. Is he dresses up <laughs> as an Arabic woman and gets fucked in the ass? To to, to what like to frame uh, someone or something? No, just What's the just purpose. To, just to do it. Just to get a good old dickin. I mean, wasn't that the whole thing in Argo? It was like a, it was like a Hollywood actor doing oh, espionage. Yeah, yeah. I haven't actually seen Argo. What the fuck? My my Ben affliction is not that strong. Yeah, the uh, w w which one is the uh, the one where they like they have to cut like have to, like cut a hole in the sheets because they can't actually touch each other. Uh, I think that that's um, that's Amish. I want to say does that. 
That sounds about right. It's 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 one of those like Amish or Mormon, one of those. One of those things. Mormon. Yeah. Whatever happened to those goofballs? You used to see them know. all the time. Now you don't see them all that much. One of my old roommates with was a Mormon. And he was well, he is. He just lives across the street because that's where he used to live. But uh he's probably somehow the the most vulgar person in my group outside of myself somehow is he like hey baby let's fucking lay down the sheets and uh go to town no 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 like i've, I've got a hole cut out for you i don't even know how to describe because like i'll have conversations like this with him but he's mormon so he just doesn't curse but everything else is just as vulgar like we'll, we'll talk like St stephen hawking climbing into the chest cavity of a of a man in during sleep paralysis. I mean, that's not technically sacrilegious, but I do believe that it's probably something that Satan would do if he walked among us. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 there's no way to argue that, because there's no, there's no public profile of Satan. Yeah. I always wondered, like, and this was back when I was like really thinking about like religion and like w w why, like why in general. Yeah. And uh, I had this idea that. It would be the the greatest trick ever conceived if if God was the devil and the devil was God. Yeah. And like, oh, exactly. The devil, the devil wrote a book about just, himself. Yeah. Also, I just uh, I just lost Overwatch. Are you still in it? Oh, I'm still on, I'm still in it. Okay. I I just had the uh, the server say it went down for me. Oh, I, I'll just open a loot box then. See what you got. I bet it's all crap. Who? No, I can't if, wait. If, if God was the devil and the devil was God. Or if they were just like two separate dudes, like if 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 neither one of them made the universe, yeah, and one of them was just like, hey, check this out. I'm gonna I'm gonna write a book about how big of a dick you are. Yeah, that sounds like a devilish move. Yeah, to just like write a book defaming someone who who doesn't have a book themselves, as far as I know. I mean, there yeah, might be a satanic the, bible. But... The de the devil is a weird plot hole because, like, what what did he, what did he uh. So he's a bad guy. God can do anything and get rid of him, but he's allowed to just do his own fucking thing, but he's a bad guy, so if you go to hell, then he's mean to you. Even though you did what he wanted you to. And, I don't know. He's weird. I think he's weird. Also, I have uh, lost connection to my uh, Overwatch server. I can't get back on. Huh. Technical difficulties may, may have ended us here chris either that or the devil himself is listening yeah it's a it's a it's a sign yeah it's a sign you you might want to you might want to make sure to lock your doors and put some uh put some tire spikes down uh some caltrops around your bed Plow, so stephen you... hawking can't get his little wheelchair up to you because the devil is coming chris don't he's, you worry lyle i have life for alert. you that's for when you've fallen and you can't get up, Chris. I it's not for when so Stephen far. Hawking... It's not for when Stephen Hawking crawls inside of you and makes your body his own. I mean, you know, it, it's... it's. I don't know, it's like uh, Febreze. Chris, if nothing else, if nothing else, you are the model of human perfection, and Stephen Hawking wants this perfect body for his own. Yeah, Stephen Hawking sitting in his chair thinking, oh man, I wish I was five feet tall. Yeah, and he's or really great at thinking, so he was thinking it way harder than anyone yeah, else could have thought anyone. it. He, he came up with every single contingency. Exactly. Every single uh, possible. Yeah, there's, there's probably a room-sized whiteboard that he had an assistant fill out with math that somehow deduces that he's going to crawl inside you. So does he crawl inside and wear you as a suit? D I, what what I what I think is he he crawls inside you, he sews you back up, and then for about a week you're yourself and you start to feel more and more like Stephen Hawking. Not the crippled part, but the the like his his thoughts start to creep into your mind until eventually you just lose yourself and he uh, assimilates you. That sounds pleasant. So, if you want to subscribe to somebody who that's going to happen to, uh, Chris Raygun, check him out on YouTube. He's he's been a uh, you've been excellent, Chris. This has been a stream for the ages. Oh, um, hell yeah. until good. until Overwatch decided that it was over. Uh, yeah. But 
Thanks for stopping by, and I'm gonna go cut my wiener off and then blow my brains out. So I'll oh. see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> bye. bye. <laughs>